Hi there guys and welcome to this video on geometric series with a focus on looking at the sum to infinity. Now let's just start by looking at the two possible types of sequence we can have. Uh, when I say that I mean the two different types of geometric sequence we can have. We can see it's geometric because there's a constant ratio between every single term here which is times by 3. Now, the next term is going to get even bigger and then even bigger still. We're going to think about what, what we're doing here. So we have 2 add 6 is 8, plus 18, 126, then 80, and then another bigger number. And if we're talking about the sum of an infinite amount of terms, well, this is going to be a huge number and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this really is a, a non-starter for us. We're not going to be able to do anything with that because that number, that sum, it's getting further and further away all the time. Let's look at this next one here. So the common ratio here is a half for every single one of these. So we know it's a geometric series. So what's going to happen on the one, two, three, four, five, sixth term? Well, that's going to be an eighth. Then we have a 1 over 16, 1 over 32, 1 over 64. And before you know it, you're not actually adding on very much at all. And it's tending towards a point. So when this happens we call this a, a converging series or converging sequence and this one is diverging. Now you came across these two words on when you did the binomial expansion and when they ask you when it is valid which basically is another way of saying for when the expansion is converging towards a point. Okay, so same same theory here. So when it's converging, we can actually use the sum of infinity. When it's diverging, we can't. We can't find the sum of an infinite amount of terms because it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when will it converge? Well, from the last one we've just seen, this can only happen when r is less than 1. So let's write that down. So when r is less than 1. Now, we put these these modular signs here just because we're only interested in the value of r not whether it's positive or negative so this just takes into account all positive values and you know if it was equal to one you just have the same term every time it'd be the most boring periodic sequence ever and if it was bigger than one like we saw in this one here the sum of infinite terms would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger when it's less than one it converges towards a point. Now we know the sum of infinity is going to be this one rather than r minus 1 like the alternative one in the other video because it's diverging and that means r is less than 1. So it just makes sense to use this one. So what's going to happen here so grab your calculators with me and let's make up a value of r, a nice simple one, let's go 0 0.5 and we're looking to raise it to an infinite amount of terms. So I should have said here, right? So sum of infinity, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the limitations here that n is tending towards an infinite number. So we're going to make n a big number. So let's put 0 0.5 to the power of 10. Okay, calculators all over that. No problem. 1 over 1024. Okay, well, let's, let's push back and change that to 100. Okay, let's change that to 100. Well, it's a really small number. You can see, you know, it's 0 0.3078888, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but the calculator is still relatively happy. We can raise it to 100 terms. Well, let's, let's, let's raise it to 1,000 terms. Well, your calculator has done something really interesting here. It's just said it's zero, and we know that's not true. But because it's so small, our calculator, and we accept this, we say, well, it's just so small, it's really no point in adding anything on, so let's just call it zero. And we can go past a thousand, but what I'm trying to tell you here is, as we go to an infinite amount of terms, this bit here is always going to be zero. And one take away zero is always going to be one. So what we actually have, if we consider the limits n is tending towards infinity, we're going to have a but inside this bracket, we've got one take away zero, which is one. So a times one is just a. So I'm not going to write anything else. And nothing's happening to the denominator. 
So there we have it. And just remember, it can only be used on converging series, which basically means the common ratio has to be less than 1. So you need to know that formula off by heart. It's very easy. And let's just have a look at a couple of examples. So in this first one, we've got this big U here, capital U. Um, so that's telling us the term. This is the fourth term along, and we've got the seventh term. So they can catch you out here. They change these U's to S's for the sum of the first four terms. So just be really careful. So because that's the fourth term, I know that's the first term, A, multiplied by the common ratio three times, and that is equal to 1.08. And the seventh term is the first term multiplied by the common ratio six times, and I get 0 0.23328. All right, so I'm just writing down what I know. Sum of infinity, well, to do that, I need A and I need R. I don't have either, so we'll just add to this in a little while. All right, so I've got two simultaneous equations, so let's solve them simultaneously. So I'm not going to add them. It creates serious issues for me. Same as subtraction. Let's let's uh, let's divide them. So let's do bottom divide by top. Well I end up with R cubed and that is actually 0.216 and if we cube root that we're gonna get 0 0.6. That's pretty nice. Let's pop that in here. So so one minus 0 0.6 well that's 0 0.4. I'm just gonna get rid of that little scribble I made there. Okay, um, you may be thinking, well, you always go on about never divide by a variable, but, you know, it's it, this is only representing one constant value that we don't know, so in this instance that is okay. It's when you're trying to find roots of graphs and you're trying to divide by x's, don't do that, okay? But for, in this type of example, it's, it's perfectly fine. Now, well, we've got two equations here. One two that have an a in and they also have an r in so when we sub this in there's only one unknown so let's just go for the easiest one first so we know a times 0 0.6 cubed is 1.08 so if I rearrange that to find a I get 5 uh, you should pop 5 and 0 0.6 back into here just to make sure this works which it does you know, with all simultaneous equations, it shouldn't really leave a question with any uncertainty. All right, so a is 5, so sum of infinity, 5 divided by 0 0.4, that's 12.5. One thing I haven't done, which I should always do at this point, get in a habit of writing the sequence out. So 5 times 0 0.6, well, that's 3, times again by 0 0.6, we get 1.8. I don't know this bit, so I have to use my calculator, but I'm assuming it's going to be 1.08 which it is. So that fills me with confidence as well. The fourth term using my numbers is 1.08 and that should is what it should have been. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So example two. Ah, see, they've changed this to an S now. So that means the sum of the first four terms and we've got the sum of infinity. Right, so I know 15 and we're going to use this formula because it's converging. I know it's converging. It doesn't tell me because they've told the sum of infinity and that only works on converging. So that's really important to know. And actually I don't need that n there, do I? I can just change this. Get rid of oh, that was a bit heavy handed. So we've got r to the 4 because we know it's the first four terms. So that's all we know. Um, what do we know about sum of infinity? So sum of infinity is a over 1 minus r. We know that's equal to 16. And now we have just have to think. Wow. Where do we go from here? Now, there's a few things. You could rearrange this for a and then sub it in to this first one here. But you could be really sneaky. 16 is equal to a over 1 minus r, and that's actually what we have here. We have an a over 1 minus r. What's actually happening here, I'm just going to write it in a, a pink, is we've got a over 1 minus r 
and this is the same as what we can see above times the tops we have this up here so instead of writing a over 1 minus r what we can do is write 16 so it would be 16 lots of 1 minus r to the power of 4 and that is equal to 15 I'm just going to get rid of that because I'm going to need this space OK, so let's just go ahead and just find r to the power of what, what r is. So 15 divided by 16, I'm just going to write that over here. Now I'm trying to make r the subject, but it's negative, so I'm going to have to swap the sides. So r to the power of 4. Now 1 minus that, well, 16 over 16, take away 15 over 16, it's going to leave me 1 over 16. And I'm going to find the fourth root, which is square root and square root again. And that's plus or minus. Now, <clears throat> given, so I've just rubbed out that G there, haven't I? Given all terms are positive, well, what that tells me is R must be equal to a half, not a minus a half. Because if I start having a common ratio that's negative, I'm going to get terms that are negative. The fact that all terms are positive, I don't have to worry about the negative. Okay, so let's find A. So I've got a formula here ready to go and I've got a formula up here but that's that's way more hard work so let's use this one so we know 16 is equal to a over 1 minus a half so it's a half half of 16 is 8 and there you go this is a really easy topic so just get them done get fluent and then get ready to move on next lesson